Foxy, you know what? Foxy, pick a Halloween movie. Look at her. She wants me. Uh, Come here. You want a treat? Come here. Come here. We'll get treats. Come here. Hey there, Nipass Boys. Welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm Ray. This is Foxy. And today we're going to be looking at Shaun of the Dead. So, Shaun of the Dead is a British sort of spoof on zombie movies. And man, it's really good. I forgot how great this movie was. I haven't seen it in so long. Honestly, the reason I'm going back to it, aside from the fact that it's October, is the fact that it's in the Film Buffs bucket list. It's one of the movies that you should definitely see before you die. And I figured, why not start with this one? Side note, I do know I've been away for like two or three weeks. Maybe two weeks. Uh, for one, I've just been kind of lazy and procrastinate. Two, uh, work kind of wears me out mentally. And three, I was going to have this video up the first week of October, but uh, had to get stitches because I don't know how to cut food, apparently. And it did really hurt me a lot. Also, while I have you here at the beginning of the video, definitely go down and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the videos that I do put out. So my question for you guys this video is, of the Coronetta Trilogy, which is Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, and The World's End, which one's your favorite? It's extremely close for me between Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead, with a world... Is it The World's End or The World's End? The World's End? I forget. But yeah, The World's End is a close third for me. Uh, I really like the movie, it's just not as great as the first two, I think. During an outbreak of a zombie virus in Britain, a man must gather his deadbeat friend, his ex-girlfriend, her friends, as well as his parents, and hold up in the most secure location to outlast the hordes. The local pub. So Simon Pegg and Nick Frost were phenomenal in the movie. They have a really good chemistry and an extremely relatable and understandable dynamic going on between the two. Speaking of performances, I thought the whole rest of the cast did a great job and I really like how they played off of each other throughout the movie. Special shout out to Bill Nighy, Martin Freeman, oh, bye there. And Peter, let's see if I can pronounce his name, Serafin No Wicks. Yeah, just to name a few, like there was other great performances, but I just really like them because of a lot of their later works, and it was really fun to see them in this. I do really like the story of how Sean has this friendship that he's really holding on to, even though it's clearly holding him back in a lot of life's regards, especially affecting his relationship with his girlfriend. I like how at his lowest moment, he has to kind of pull himself together and by the end of the film take charge and take control of his life. The movie's full of great writing, some really smart jokes, and a lot of which does require the audience to pay some attention. I know a lot of people don't like to do that when they see a movie, but pay attention. Come on. I'd really say my only issue with the movie is that some of the audio doesn't sync up properly and there's some weird ADR and Foley work going on, but that's such a minuscule nitpick. It's really not a detraction from the film, I would say. Edgar Wright does a phenomenal job directing this movie as well, with some really cool and interesting techniques that he employs. One of which in particular is definitely when he does, I believe, two kind of long shots where it shows Sean going through his daily routine. You see all the people kind of acting like zombies to begin with in just normal life. And then once the zombies actually do hit, he just goes through that exact same shot where you just see how everything has been affected by the apocalypse. I thought it was really cool and interesting. I really like that it feels like a small budget passion project for Edgar Wright and everyone involved. And one of the really cool elements that I like is the fact that you can see the camera in a lot of the shots, like reflection wise. I thought that was a cool little, like, maybe like peek through the movie magic, I guess. Granted, I don't like that in every movie, but this just kind of felt endearing, I guess, in a way. He's also able to infuse some jump scares and a lot of suspense in the movie, which personally didn't have any effect on me, but Amanda got pretty scared. She's a baby. The film is iconic to me, and maybe I forgive some of the other flaws, but I find this movie to be damn near perfect, endlessly enjoyable, and has me laughing upon every view. Shaun of the Dead gets a 9 out of 10. For a movie that came out in 2004, Shaun of the Dead holds up incredibly well, and aside from some antiquated technology, you wouldn't even really be able to tell that it's almost a decade and a half old at this point. So there's my review for Shaun of the Dead, uh, I absolutely adore this movie, clearly. And I'm glad I could finally get another review out because, I haven't, like I said, I haven't done one in a while. So, as always, thanks for watching my review for Shaun of the Dead, guys. It means a great deal continuing to watch the content that I do put out. Like I said at the beginning of the video, definitely go down and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the videos that I do put out. Give the video a like, share with a movie-loving friend, and let me know which of the three Coronado trilogy is your favorite. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you.